Hi, welcome to Adventure Airsoft. This video today is prompted by uh, me trying to find a velocity locking pin for a uh, Tipman HPA V2 uh, CQB, uh, which there seems to be a worldwide shortage at the minute, which uh, I don't know why. Um, what I decided to do was take the measurements myself and actually make one. Um, if you're unsure what a velocity locking pin looks like, it's basically a longer pin uh, than your standard rear mounting pin. Um, that allows you to have a hole in the middle of it which you can put a cable tie and the reason for that is so that uh, once you've chronoed at certain sites the organizers will then put a cable tie a colored cable tie through there to inhibit uh, you in making any fps changes to your weapon system after chrono so that you're not using a hot weapon out in the field now we all know i'm not getting to the legality or the um, justification in why people would want to do that but also uh, it's just as quick for someone to change a spring in a in the uh, AER um, than it is for us to, to crack this open and, and change the FPS. So I'm not going into it the reason why, is, but that's the that's the reason why some sites uh, require a velocity locking pin. But because of the worldwide shortage, that's bumped the price up. Some places you're looking at um, upwards of 20 or 30 pounds UK delivery uh, for a velocity locking pin from Europe and stuff, and it's just unacceptable. It's just a, a metal pin. So, I stumbled across when I was uh, when I was sort of looking, you know, and I took the pin out. And we'll come on to that in a second. Uh, you can actually make your own pin very easily and very cheaply. Uh, so uh, I thought I'd share it with you guys to uh, to see where we go. So to further ado, um, if you haven't got one of these, so this is the buttstock uh, ring spanner. This one came with uh, Tipman, so it's got Tipman on it. This came with my weapon. Some do come with them, some don't. If they don't come with it. Uh, I'd recommend using one of these to get the uh, your buckstock ring off um, rather than rounding it off and damaging it. So once you've used that, you release on the Tipman, I think this is, so this is very Tipman specific now, release the locking collar. All you do then to get the, the bits out we need to start the, start the job uh, is to twist then the, the buttstock. And by twisting the buttstock, what will happen is these two little things will pop out. So a little pin will pop out and a spring. So once they're popped out, you can then go on and look at removing the pin. Uh, they basically, they're retention pins and they slide inside. I don't know if you can see that, that's the standard pin. They slide inside the pin and they go to two little, two little recesses. So when it's fully inserted, it clicks into place. And then when it's fully, um, uh, fully released, in the out position to release the pin, to stop it dropping out on the floor and losing it, once you open the weapon system, it fits into a little recess again, which we can then recreate on the new pin anyway, so it's absolutely fine. But that's a standard pin that's too short. Why they don't issue with a velocity locking pin for the sake of uh, maybe three or four mil extra, I've got no idea. Um, just a money making scheme, I believe. So once that's out then, you can then look at uh, fitting a new pin. So what I found out then was I found out that when I went online, after taking the measurements of the standard pin, because I was looking at 3D printing it, um, and then decided otherwise, you know, I'd look at the actual pin itself. I found out that you could buy these. So this, uh, this is a clevis pin. So that bit there is a clevis pin, which looks remarkably like that. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, clevis pins are used to hold um, many things all over the place, mainly used on trailers and things to hold um, either stuff in place or to hold tailgates shut or to hold, um, when you're towing a vehicle, they, they sort of got the pins on tow, tow bars, that kind of stuff. You know, they're very quick and easy pin to get in and out and they're normally pretty hard so that's the, that's the positive um, they come with a um, an R clip um, generally come with an R clip so you put the pin through and you put the R clip through so that's what I found so this pin here is an, uh, advertised as an M6 by 30 mil pin um, you, these came as three pounds forty uh, from eBay from a um, sort of pin fastener supplier really quick uh, and they came two for three pounds forty. So I, I thought it was remarkably cheap in its own right. Um, this one actually measures at thirty mil. In case you're interested, thirty mil by five point six mil in diameter. Um, so that's the actual pin itself. And if I place that into the weapon, then you will see that the fit is remarkably good. Actually, on uh, it fits flush, just like the normal pin on that side. The other side. <coughs> you will see that it does protrude a decent amount, not too much, um, but enough for you to still get onto the uh, fire selector. The only thing you have to do, if you want to use, just use the pin like it is now, is you have to drill the hole slightly bigger to get a, a 
cable tie or the average sort of standard size cable tie in um, and that because it's a harder metal it's just you put it in a vice and then go nice and steady through it and you'll drill a hole big enough for a cable tie uh, I wanted to use it a bit more long term um, and didn't want it quite that colour so I don't recommend you spraying it because if you spray it spray the whole pin you know bits of uh, bits of paint are going to be inside there and they'll start getting around working around into the working parts but more importantly they'll work their way into the seals uh, and the sort of internal regulator in that and then things are going to start to go wrong and you don't want to do that you want to keep it as a standard bit of metal so when, when I take the pin or sorry when I take the uh, cable tie out I didn't want to lose the pin on the floor and stuff so what I decided to do is experiment in trying to make make this pin a bit longer out of this pin. So there's a couple of things I did. The first thing was drill the hole. So you can see there, this is the longer pin. Drill the hole through that to get a cable tie through. So that fits a not got one to hand. That fits your, your standard sort of general small, really, really small cable tie. I don't know what sort of size that's called, but it'll fit a normal cable tie through. Um, no problems, no dramas. So all I've done is basically marked up, I measured the, measured the groove inside there uh, and then just put that into a vise and then just used a cutting disc and cut out a channel in there for the, um, uh, for the pin, the retaining pin just to, just to sit inside. So that will then sit, if you can see, sit inside that channel and then move along. Now, because when I when you remove that, I didn't want it to sort of remove and come straight out. I I did put a um, a little recess in the end, just like there is on the original, uh, just so that sticks at the end, so you can't pull it all the way out. Like a captive bit, so it's captive within that. Uh, obviously, like I said, I didn't want to um, didn't want to spray it either. So um, you can see the they are two different colours completely and that's quite a dark gunmetal colour now uh, and I'll explain how we got onto that so there's a process that you can use for heating metal up and quenching that is basically you can use the case harden metals by quenching them in oil the easiest way of doing this I'll set it up and I'll show you I'll show you on this pin so you can see it um, and it's a really easy tip and all it is is basically you turn that metal permanent uh, a permanent grey or permanent gun metal um, and basically what you do is you hold it over a, over a sort of really hot flame normally about a gas burner for you know uh, maybe maybe a minute or so until it gets red hot you then drop that into you know, a small tub as long as it's a metal tub it doesn't need any more than like 20 or 30 mils of uh, engine oil it can be engine oil um, drop it in there and the engine oil will then quench it and what happens is all the carbon um, and the minerals in the engine oil permanently turn that uh, a darker colour so you can you eventually be able to scratch that and you'll get down to shiny metal again but it's it will take some going uh, and you've basically case hardened it ever so slightly as well there's a, you've not gone through the right process for case hardening but you've uh, you've done a good job in trying to um to case harden it so that's basically what it is and it saves you spraying it having that so when i put that in there now just as a reference for you compared to the other one so you can see that is you know sort of fairly nice there and grey so uh, that works out fine so what I'll do uh, is we'll cut and I'll show you this uh, show you this fitted show you that it works with the works with the uh, the internal pin you don't have to be too accurate if you can see that uh, I'll just quite rushed it you don't have to be too accurate with um, if you're using a, a Dremel and stuff as long as you kind of made what I do is made a guide out of a metal ruler uh, to hold it on and then just like follow the metal ruler down to about two mil um, as long as it's a, a, a good enough a good enough gap for the uh, for the retaining pin to go through it's it's, it's fairly fairly straightforward and if you put a bit of lube on there it'll be all right anyway um so yeah basically that was what we what managed to do so so far so good we'll go through and i'll show you that show the front show you the process once it's fitted so then that is the the pin fitted that's the butt uh, the butt ring back in uh, back in place or the stock ring tightened up nice and tight the springs inside there and the retaining pin is inside so you notice now that when I push that it comes out and it has like a, a nice click for it to click in place that for you can you can open the weapon do what you need to do close it back down 
and it's back in. And the retaining pin is inside there. On this side, if you don't, want, if you don't need to use a velocity pin, you can just use, uh, use the, uh, the R-clip if you want to use the R-clip. Or if not, you want to be using, you're just going to leave it as, uh, as a standard setup for all sites and you're okay and you're confident that it's going to be doing that, you can then add the cable tie. So if I just add that now. Easier said than done. So you can see where the cables are fitted now. That doesn't, that pin isn't going to go anywhere. It's uh, if anyone checks at it from Marshall Wise or from the site Wise, they can add their cable tie. You can see there that it is velocity locked, and you can also get on your fire selector, no problems. And therefore, what you've also got with that three pound forty is you've got a spare pin. So in case you want to go, you know, go back to a normal pin, um, where you go back to your standard pin, you've got spare pins there, not a problem. And that is how you can sort of uh, prevent the, the, spend, the expense of uh, £30 worth of velocity pins. You can make your own uh, and have a bit more sort of bit of pride in your work, etc. So that's how you do that. How you do the quenching thing, we'll come on to that right now. So the quenching process then. You're going to need a couple of things. First of all, you're going to need some sort of gas burner or heat source. So you can use your hob at home, your gas hob at home. Um, personally, I'm in my little, little environment here, my little safe place. So you, uh, usually a camping stove works perfectly well for this. Uh, you're gonna need some oil, like I mentioned before, I recommend engine oil because it's high in mineral, mineral content and therefore it goes quite dark. So you can see this oil here, if you can see that, it is quite dark, which is what you want. Ideally use a metal tub or a metal lid, um, purely because uh, if it's not, you don't put enough in there, it doesn't quench it enough, it'll just melt straight through the bottom, which I've done before, which is not great. Can you get uh, a hot bit of metal on the edge of engine oil everywhere? Not great. Uh, you're then going to need something to hold the pin. So uh, I recommend, you know, some mole grips or some sort of surgical grips like this to hold it steady in place so you don't drop it and goes everywhere because it's going to be red hot. So what you do is you basically heat this up until it goes red hot. And then drop it straight away into the engine oil, which will then it's all this little bubble away, and you get see a bit of smoke and stuff. But it'll just quench it fairly quickly. Um, but as long as the whole pin's covered, and you'll get the same effect. So we'll go through that now. Last thing we're going to need is a uh, smoke alarms going off. So let's uh, set this baby alight. You can already see it's starting to change colour. Just because of the heat and the coating that's already on it. Just going red hot on this side here. It's actually bent my uh, bent the grips there. There we go, red hot. So, so you can see that now being quenched. By the oil, a little bit of nice smoke off it. So leave that for a minute or two. So they've been uh, they've been used too much. These uh, forceps, aren't they? Used a bit too much. So whilst that's cooling down, you need a piece of rag. See by magic, it's the rag box. Move it out of the way to cool down. Fish that out. So there you go. You can see that now is uh, yeah, it's quite cool. So you can see that now, that is a permanent, permanent grey. There you go, nice gunmetal grey. So that'll be slightly case hardened as well now, so a little bit hard, although the pins are hard anyway, don't get me wrong. That'll be a little bit harder for you to um, 
do what you need to do. But I recommend you drilling it first before you do that, because otherwise it might be a bit too hard for these drill bits. But that is basically how you make your own pins, uh, make your own velocity pins uh, for your, not only for your Tipman, but also for any uh, for any airsoft uh, rear mounting pin. You can um, get the measurements, measure it yourself, have a look at eBay. You can see the link of the ones I had uh, on there. So that was an M6 by 30 mil, uh, 30 mil obviously in length by 5.6 millimeters in uh, uh, in diameter. So yeah, next thing you need to know is a uh, just get yourself a, a, a Dremel or a of sorts just to uh, just to do that. So if you've got any questions, please fire them below. Please look at the other content and please subscribe uh, for more videos. I've got some more top tips coming up, especially with uh, GoPros and cameras out in the field. So, see you later.